And a special guest here in the booth visiting with Brewers owner Mark Adonacio. Welcome in your spring hey. training yellow, man. You're looking <laughs> great. They actually, uh, the, the, clubbies, uh, the clubhouse guys uh, wear these, so they gave me one, and I asked if I had to you know, work to get one, and I said, as long as we kept signing the checks, I didn't, <laughs> they weren't going to put me to work. That's you didn't have to enough, tape any right? ankles today, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's That's a, I tell you, there Mark. There were a bunch of guys in that training room. This is, um, I, I mean, spring training, Maybe more than any other sport, uh, the exhibition schedule, it's so much fun. Players, owners, staff, fans alike. This is really a, a treat to be here. Again. It's it's the best time of year, right? Yeah. And, you know, some people call it a, a spring training high or yeah. what they use other terms, uh, other uh, pharmaceutical terms, <laughs> because uh, it's impossible not to feel good and uh, get to some warm weather and uh, just get back to baseball right? yeah the energy of this uh, this group here these brewers have got to make you feel good as well I mean they're they're enough to get you feeling like uh, things are in the, going in the right direction right well you saw when you know uh, Keon Buxton took yeah. still learning the names but you know took second base on a single and scores uh, guys are playing hard they're playing with energy the mood in the clubhouse is just terrific really uh, awesome Cordell grounds to short VR nice play for out number one we talked about that we just had Matt Garza on a moment ago and that is the constant theme from veteran players it's not just that you know they're being asked and I think they're stepping up to those duties as mentor and teaching the game but I think to a man guys like Garza Braun Luke Croy they're talking about these young players are asking a lot of questions so it, they're energized the veteran players are energized but what these young guys are bringing to the table every day and obviously there's a lot of competition which is going to bring a little extra step as well you know it's interesting i uh, as you know i work on wall street and i was always the youngest guy in the meeting and i remember very clear to this day when i was sitting around a room and i looked around and I went, gee this is weird i'm the oldest guy sitting here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of happens all of a sudden and I think that, you know, maybe happened this year with the way we've transitioned in the team. All of a sudden, uh, you know, Ryan and Luke and uh, Matt, and they're like the deans, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, all, everybody's coming to them, right? Yeah. Every, these young guys are just soaking up. Aaron Hill, obviously, though, he's right. had that role before. And I think it's, uh, they're really energized. Even, you know, our veterans are energized by that. Yeah, Mark, this, this whole transition is something new to you. You bought the club and you started adding pieces to get to the postseason. How difficult of a decision was it for you at, you know, about midseason last year to start trading away players for prospects? Well, you know, Rock, we actually, the mindset when we made the change uh, to bring Craig in is that we actually knew at that point what direction we were going because, um, you would have made that change if you thought you were, you were going to still play things out. And and we had really played out that, that poker hand, so to speak. Mix and matching a lot of terms here. But you know, we had played out that group of players and pretty much 10 years of, of just building, 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 and winning. And when you start 4 and 17, that's the signal. If you can't read that, <laughs> if, by the way, it wasn't very too hard to read that signal. Yeah. So uh, once you're going to shift, you really need to shift uh, in a determined way. You can't, you know, it doesn't, it just slows things down. So once we went with Craig, and, and the reason we went with Craig when we did is we wanted to start, we knew we were going to get going with some younger guys, and we wanted him to be in the process so that this year he's already, you know, he started at running at full speed this mm -hmm. year. And I talked to him about it because he was uh, a little hesitant for a number of reasons. The chief, which frankly nobody wants to take somebody else's job. Everybody liked Ron Rankin, and, and uh, like Craig didn't want to be seen as you know, lobbying for his job or anything like that. But uh, it's a huge advantage for us that you know Craig is no longer a rookie manager. Right? How is it? Oh, I'm sorry. No, Go no, ahead. that's all. How is the dynamic with uh, Craig Council, David Stearns, uh, developed in your mind? Things going well with that, I assume. You know, one of the uh, goals for the offseason was to have those two guys bond, but you can't take two, you know, humans and put them together and say, but guys, bond. Uh, but, you know, I think the fact that Craig had been in the front office for a few seasons helped because he understood uh, the nature of the difficult decisions that have to be made and, and that some of those decisions, you know, would make his job harder, right? So um, having nine guys try out for center field, you know, that... It's actually interesting for all of us as a fans to see all these guys, but 
you know, it'd be a lot easier for Craig for us to just go get an everyday center fielder and put him out right, there, right? right? And so, uh, but he he uh, had studied this from a front office perspective. He'd studied teams that had uh, rebuilt, and so he knew from an intellectual standpoint what we need to do. Now, by the way, he's really on top of this. We, he and I have talked a few times, you know, this spring. He's very excited about what we're doing. When we get into the season and we, you know, there's going to be some growing pains, you know, it'll, uh, he'll have to wear it a little bit, but I think he's, uh, he's ready for it. Looking at Chris Capuano and the new battery of Capuano and Renee Garcia. Glad Garcia is okay there. As, uh, an old brewer returns. Yeah, Cappy, I didn't notice him with the beard. We, we, I didn't either. <laughs> I walked right by him right? in the clubhouse. I had no idea. I, yeah. at, Who's, I turned around. Who's that guy? That, Capuano. You know, we, I talked to the players the first day, and I'm looking at this guy under with Lockheed that says Capuano. Well, who's that? <laughs> ah, that's Chris. <laughs> Former 18-game winner for the Milwaukee Brewers and always has that great changeup. He's ahead 0-2 on Syriaca. We're visiting with Mark Adonacio, Brewers owner, and it's a big, big, big weekend for the Brewers. Had a big sponsor party yesterday. It's a great time. Uh, what a fantastic facility, the Biltmore, and I know the sponsors uh, enjoyed their time. You put on a good party, Mark. You uh, probably writing a sizable check for them, but that was a lot of fun. Thanks for letting us tag along. Sizable good, check. Yeah. Uh, no skipping on the food. Syriaco with a base hit. In the left center, and all the way to third base goes to Shields. The Rangers have him at the corners. But um, the sponsor event, you know, I, I sense a lot of enthusiasm with some of the key people as well with uh, with the Brewers, and uh, they're not just fans, and but they're sponsors, and they're a big part of what you're trying to accomplish here in Milwaukee. It was great to see all those folks last night. Yeah, I think uh, Rick Schlesinger and, and his team in the business side did a really good job of uh, telegraphing this back to when we started doing the changes we uh, in the summer the personnel changes they reached out to a number of our sponsors really real t on a real-time basis and said look this is what they're doing and, and and brought them along with us so they felt like they were part of the process and not because we really regard uh, really the reason we put on a you know an event like last night their support and uh, you know, their support and our season ticket holders and fan support help us do what we do every day and and then that, that, they stuck with us a number of sponsors uh, extended their contracts this offseason yeah. and I, I, I think they believe in in what we're doing and everybody's uh, excited about it looks like the biggest crowd that uh, you've had at one of those sponsored parties. that was a huge turnout last night yeah uh, that was I think that may have been a record turnout in terms of sponsors fielder pops this one a mile high yeah, right say that's, on the logo. It's a record pop-up. <laughs> yeah. By, by the way, before he gets too far away here, um, what comes to mind when you see a Prince Fielder? You know, it's uh, you talk about how great it is spring training. I looked down at first base. And it's so familiar to see Prince down there. I had to stop myself. You know, he's playing for the other team now, right? right. There he is in a in a blue uniform and at Maryvale. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, we uh, from time to time, either during the season or occasionally at some player functions, we we'll bump into some of the old guys and. Uh, you know, we've had a great relationship with Prince, which has extended, you know, past his going to Detroit now and now Texas. The door is open that one day he could return, maybe. You never, you know, <laughs> listen, Lyle Overbay returned, right? Sure. <laughs> Another first baseman return. Chris Capuano's back. Cappy's back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sure, of course. Yeah. Well, visiting with Mark Adonacio. I'd like Talk to get Prince back before he's 38 if yeah, we get him right. back. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> That's when we got Lyle was when he was 38. But, Mitch uh, Moreland at the plate for Texas. Capuano has two outs here in a 3-3 game, trying to keep it that way. And Moreland on the ground. Carter's got it, and he'll take it to the bag. You want to stay another half inning? We'd sure, love to cook, eh? keep firing these hard-hitting yeah, questions at you, Mark. <laughs> Always tough questions. It's been training. <laughs> Tied at three. Brewers are coming up. We'll do more with Mark Adonacio after this.